Jenny Me, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about running and how to get started or get back into it. These are things that I wish somebody had told me about before I really got into running. But first, I need to cool down after my easy run and have a shower and definitely make coffee. I think one of the most important things when you're first starting is having the right pair of shoes. I highly recommend going to a specialty shoe store, like Black Toe Running for example, where they can see how you walk and find the right pair of shoe for you. It is so important to have a proper fitting shoe so you don't get injured. Eventually when you run more, I suggest getting several pairs of shoes for different types of runs. I'm going to show you now the shoes that I currently rotate between. Now it may seem like I have a lot of running shoes, but each are for a specific purpose. I really believe part of the reason I haven't got any major injuries is because I rotate between shoes. Now this one is by Nike, it's a Zoom Fly 3 with a carbon plate in it, and I feel so fast in them. The next ones are the New Balance 1800s with a boa instead of laces, which I use for short speed work. The next ones are by New Balance also, the 880s for long runs, which I just got and they're so cute. And lastly, these are the Hoke One One Clifton 6 that I used to use for long runs, but I shouldn't really use anymore because I have so many kilometers on them. So many pretty shoes. Another important thing about shoes is keeping track of how many kilometers you have on them. You can keep track on an app or by hand if you'd like. It is recommended that you retire a shoe or stop using it after a certain amount of kilometers. After time, the foam gets compressed under our weight in the shoe. A shoe that's designed for speed with maybe a little less cushioning may last only to 500 kilometers, while a shoe that has more cushioning and designed for longer runs may last up to 800. You need to listen to your body though, and if you feel aches or pains that you usually don't get when you're running near the end of the shoe life, that's probably a good sign that you should retire and stop using the shoe. I know shoes are expensive, but it's really important to have a good pair of fitting shoes so you don't get injured. No one wants to stop running or exercise because of an injury. If you want to become a better runner, you just have to run more. Consistency is key. I would say three times a week is a good place to start to build a foundation. When you first start getting back into running, it can feel terrible. Some days you're not going to feel like running and have a bad run. However, I believe a bad run is better than no run, and you learn to appreciate the really good runs after having a terrible run. And trust me, I've had some terrible runs. A few tips to help you get out of the door is putting your clothes out the night before. Another idea is to put it in your schedule so you have no excuse. I put mine in my bullet journal, which you can see above how I use it to organize my music practice. I find if I put it in my calendar, I will schedule my day around the run. I like to run in the morning as it gets it over with and starts my day off on a good foot. It's important to build a foundation of running before you add any tempo or speed runs. If you add these specific runs too early, you could risk getting injured. If you're interested in learning more about these speed and tempo runs, please check back as I'll be doing a video on them later on. If you're only running 10 kilometers and suddenly bump it up the next week to 30 kilometers, there's a strong possibility that you could get injured. A basic rule of thumb is not to add more than 10% of your kilometers each week. I wish I had this advice when I first got back into running. I decided to sign up for a half marathon with barely any training. A couple weeks before the half marathon, I could barely walk. This was due to lack of foam rolling and increasing my kilometers too soon and too much. Oh my word, I just found my first half marathon training plan in my bullet journal. I would not recommend doing a half marathon with this little training. It brings back so many memories as I did this training plan in the car ride to Kingston before a rehearsal. You should never be in pain for an extended period of time. Your body will tell you if you need to cut back your kilometers or take a little break. For me, being healthy is the most important thing. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. I'm a very goal-oriented person and thrive when I have something to work towards. You can have short-term goals like running a 5k personal best or a long-term goal of eventually doing a marathon. Whatever you decide to do, I promise it will help motivate you to run. Even if you don't eventually run a marathon or even a half marathon, that's okay. It's just something that I like to do. Again, creating a goal is really helpful with consistency. Clothes. They are great. Now you don't have to go buy expensive clothing, but you might want to invest in some things that will make running a little more comfortable. Running clothes typically are breathable, moisture wicking, anti-shave, and anti-stink material, which is really helpful. If you don't want to go buy a bunch of running clothes, I would highly recommend getting some running socks. Running socks can be padded or a little thinner, but they're made of material so you don't get blisters or to help prevent blisters on your feet. 
Blisters are not fun and do whatever you can to avoid them. There are other accessories you can run with like a belt or headphones. A running belt can be useful though to put your phone in, your keys, and any gels you want to take on your run. Though I know many people do wear headphones when they run, I personally don't. I also love wearing the gooder sunglasses as they don't bounce when I run and they look pretty cool too. If you would like to see more videos on what tools I use for recovery, my pre or post activation and stretches, and what tools I use for just running in general, please comment below. Having a training plan can be very helpful in structuring your weekly runs. For me, I can follow my training plan and know that certain runs are there for a specific reason. You can find training plans online or joining a running club. There are several running clubs in Toronto or wherever you're watching this from, but I highly recommend Black Toe Running. I have made so many wonderful friends at this club. My running has also improved dramatically after joining. I am so much faster, fitter, and more knowledgeable because of them. Even if you can't meet up with a running club yet, you can connect with them virtually and get a training plan that way. Now I love Strava maybe probably too much. For those of you who don't know, Strava is an app that you can upload your runs, walks, hikes, cycling, swimming, just a whole bunch of different sports too. For me, I love Strava because it also helps me keep track of my kilometers on my shoes and also the different kind of runs that I do. In the week or weeks leading up to my marathon, I find it really helpful to look back on my runs on Strava. There I can see how much stronger I've gotten and faster and gives me the confidence to know that I can complete this marathon. You can connect virtually with friends and give them kudos on their uploads. If you're watching this video and you're like, Amy, I'm way ahead of you, and you have some helpful hints that I didn't cover in this video, please share them in the comment section below. Running and exercise in general has just made me a healthier version of myself. If I eat like junk the night before, my morning run the next day will feel awful. I used to have constant pain in my shoulder from playing the violin. After I started running and exercising, I felt stronger and barely have any pain anymore. Even if you can't run, any form of exercise would be beneficial for the long term and short term. I started running consistently again when I was going through a really hard time. It gave me the opportunity to not only be tired enough so I would sleep, but it also helped me think or just not think at all. It's important to note that if you have any previous medical conditions or injuries, to consult a medical professional before you start exercising. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the bell icon to get notified every time I upload a video. If you like this video, Hit the thumbs up and I'll see you next time.